That's it to right field. Long run for Pilar. And Pilar all out into foul territory to make the play. Bogarts with a drive out to right field. Judge is back on it, and that one's gone. Against all odds. Here's a high fly ball driven deep to right. Verdugo back to the pen. Leaps up. He caught it. He caught the ball. He took it back. And I will keep on waiting for a better day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the pesky poll podcast my name is robert there is no ari unfortunately today he's been feeling really sick but today i have an extremely special episode for you guys this should be coming out on sunday the lord's day as always i hope you guys are having an amazing week and an amazing day in general today i got lucky enough to be interview rule five draft prospect for your boston Red Sox going to pitch up with the majors this year. His name is Garrett Whitlock. Now stick around for this interview because I learned a ton from this guy. And it was it was more of a short interview. It wasn't one of our longer ones. But with us getting to interview Christian Koss first and Garrett Whitlock, two of your one being Red Sox major league players coming into the bullpen, a revamped and refreshed bullpen from last year, and one middle infielder who's probably going to be down in Portland, but definitely somewhere in the minor leagues. We really hope you guys get to learn something from this. I definitely did. It has been an amazing experience for me these past two weeks, getting to sit down and just pick apart these guys' brains for, you know, 20 minutes, a half hour each. So if you guys do like this, make sure to like and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, you get to see this beautiful face and hopefully Ari's sometime soon. Spotify and iTunes, gang, I never forget about you guys. How you guys doing today? We have a lot of... A lot of big stuff coming up for the Pesky Poll Podcast and the Amateur Hour Sports Network brand. So make sure you guys stay with us. Follow us on Instagram at Pesky Poll Podcast and at Amateur Hour Sports Network. With that being said, I don't want to keep you guys any longer. Let's get right into the interview. All right, guys. With me today, we have Rule 5 Draft pick from the Red Sox pitcher, Garrett Whitlock. Garrett, how you doing today? Hey, doing good. Thanks for having me, Robert. It's so nice to have you on. Let's just get right into it. So me and our fans want to get to know you more on a personal level, your baseball story and all that. So just to start off, what was your favorite team growing up? Uh, Growing up, uh, I grew up in Georgia, so it had to have been the Atlanta Braves. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's around, I'm from the, I just moved down to the middle of Tennessee. So that seems like it's a very big thing because there's not really a ton of baseball down this area besides maybe Florida. Yeah, but, I was about to say, the, uh, the Braves, they, they call it Braves country for sure because down in the southeast, it's, there's not really a pro team that's around. Mm-hmm, absolutely. We need, a, we need a baseball team in Tennessee. But <laughs> going off of that, who was your favorite player when you were oh, like, going through high school? Uh, going through high school, so it'll be funny. I'm sure the Red Sox people love this, but I've always looked up to Rick Porcello. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah, so I know he's not a really big-name guy, but, um, I mean, he did win a Cy Young, but um, that's someone I've always modeled my pitching after and someone I've uh, really looked looked to try and, you know, uh, kind of model my pitching after. All right, yeah, going – that really appeals to Red Sox fans. We love <laughs> love Rick Porcello around here. But after you went to high school, you said in Georgia, talk to us about your recruiting process and going through and eventually how you decided to choose the University of Alabama in Birmingham. So, yeah, um, I mean, it was more of I wasn't really like a hugely touted prospect or anything like that. So uh, my high school uh, coach told me he had a friend that was the pitching coach at UAB and uh, would I would I mind hearing him out and everything. And so. I uh, went uh, to Birmingham and, you know, met with all the coaches there and kind of fell in love with the program, fell in love with the way they were doing things here. And, you know, I and I'm really glad I chose there because I owe everything uh, pitching wise to my pitching coach at UAB, Josh Hopper. Mm-hmm. And I went through a lot of the numbers and just to see the progression that you had through your two years there was really, really it showed a lot. But 
And that, what was your favorite moment when you in college ball? Ooh, in college ball, favorite moment. Um, I don't know. You know, there's not really like one one specific thing that like stands out. I mean, it was just like an enjoyable time, like hanging out with all the guys that I was with, and you know, I mean, both years that I was there, it was just an amazing time. So, you know, like I can't really say one moment like was just super awesome, but I just enjoyed all of it. All right. So, um, after your two years of college, you apply for the draft. And everybody has a different draft day story. And me and the fans want to know about yours. Tell me a little bit about it. Did you go where you thought you were going to go? Because I believe, if I did my research correctly, you were selected in the 18th round, right? Yep, 18th round. Yeah. Was that around where you thought you would go? Did you think you'd go a little higher? Talk about that. Yeah. Everyone was telling me going into the, like you said, everyone's got a different draft story and everything. And everybody was telling me going into the draft, oh, you're going to go, you're going to go middle rounds, you're going to go middle rounds, like you'll be fine. I was like, that's fine. I'm a draft eligible sophomore. I've got my number I'm looking for. If I get it, good. And so, you know, I had my friends and family watching the draft on day two and everything, and, you know, nothing happened. And I've never been more embarrassed in my entire life. Like, not a call, nothing. So I'm pissed off. I'm sitting in the car because we're going to see – so she was my girlfriend at the time. She's my wife now. But we're going to go see her family down in uh, South Alabama at Gulf Shore and everything. And just spend the weekend at the beach and so i was like you know what let's get out of here let's let's just go down to the beach and I- i'm done with this draft process i'm going back for my junior year this this pissed me off and mm-hmm. so next day day three on the beach um which pretty much is when a majority of the draft picks happen is on that day three and so you know i i, I was sitting on the beach i turned my phone off and i threw it in my chair and i was just like you know what screw it i'm just gonna enjoy the time of the beach with my with my friends and family and everything and so um you know my wife or she was my girlfriend at the time wife now but she she told me hey just check your phone and, and see what happened and everything like that and so i turned it on and, and see i have a missed missed phone call from a new york area code and i was like well i guess i better call that number back and the area scout that drafted me his name is mike wagner and he had left a voicemail saying hey this is mike wagner we're drafting you um, with the new york yankees and i was like Oh, wait, what? (laughs) I hadn't talked to the Yankees. I had never said a word to them the entire draft process. So it was really cool, like, just for them to be like, hey, you know, like, we're we're really interested in you. We're going to draft you. And obviously the rest is history. So they never had any sort of conversation with you in your last year or doing any workouts or nothing like that. They just decided, why not? I, I mean, they obviously must have seen me, but they didn't say a word to me. I didn't fill out a questionnaire. I didn't, like, nothing with any of them. Oh. And then all of a sudden, like, I get that phone call, and it's like, hey, you're a Yankee. Oh, wow. All right, here we go. That is nuts. As, I don't know if you can answer this question, but what um what teams did reach out to you to say, hey, we might be interested in drafting you or anything like that? Uh. It was Dodgers and Braves is really kind of the two. I remember talking to those area scouts a lot. But, again, like, that was the thing is I only talked to area scouts. I wasn't that huge a recruit that I I didn't, like, talk to any of the scouting directors or anything like that. So all my conversation was with the area scouts. Mm -hmm. And I love that kind of story. We'll get into this later in the interview, but your story of going from a really unknown high school prospect to being drafted day three very late to – now officially being in the major leagues. But after you got drafted by the New York Yankees, I had seen that you had gone from like three teams in one year and then in 2018 you were with two different teams in the Yankees organization. Was that tough to have to go from team to team, you know, and just keep having to travel between different ball clubs? Uh, They made it it good. So uh, I went to Charleston to start the year. And then they promoted me to Tampa and they let me take my car from Charleston to Tampa. And then I did a, like, I got a cup of coffee up in Trenton and everything like twice that year. So they flew me up and down both those times and it it wasn't terrible. You know, they, they were good at communicating and, you know, the, the teammates are, are great. The teammates is what makes the experience. And, you know, for me being like a really young guy and everything like that, they were like, my teammates were really good about, you know, Hey, just show up, compete your butt off and you do that. Like you're fine. You can stick on the team. And so, and that was that was one thing I learned really quickly is you just you put your nose down and you know you you just 
you do your work and you, you respect those that came before you. All right. All right. So then in 2019, I had saw you spent a full year with the Trent Thunder and I would have loved to see what you could have done with 2020, either the minor leagues or if you would have been promoted, but obviously minor leagues couldn't have a season. So how was training different for you in 2020 without getting to play like any of the actual games, getting to go through that rigorous schedule again? Was your training any different? Did you do anything the same as you would in a regular season? So for me, I was coming back from uh, Tommy John surgery uh, that I'd had in July of 2019. Oh, and really? so all of, uh, all of 2020 for me was focusing on getting healthy and, you know, getting strong and getting back to what I was. And the, the Yankees made that clear to me. They were like, hey, especially with like, you know, they didn't know what was going on with uh, COVID and everything. So they were like, hey, mm -hmm. focus on getting healthy. Don't rush back, you know, like make sure you are who you were or like if not better. And, you know, that that was my focus all of this year. All right. Yeah, I never saw I should have done more research. I, I'm, I never saw anything <laughs> about an injury. How was that going through that injury process? Because I'm sure Tommy John took you took off a ton of time for you to rehab and get back to where you were. Yeah, so it was in July of 2019. Um, I had that Tommy John surgery, and it 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 shook my world. You know, there's there's nothing like. Uh, I was in Reading, Pennsylvania. I had my MRI at Penn State Medical Center up there, and one of the doctors up there said, "Hey, it's it's just a broken bone. You'll be fine." And so you're like, "All right, cool." And then I went up and saw the team doc up in New York. And he was like, hey, it, it's more than that. You need TJ. And so, you know, oh, wow. anytime those words are said, you know, it, it kind of takes the breath out of your lungs. And, you know, but, you know, I've been so blessed with, you know, how much the Yankees took care of me and like the, the training staff there and then the, the training staff here in Birmingham, you know, that that it is such a successful, like high surgery nowadays. And so, you know, I, I was very, very blessed for the people surrounding me there to, you know, yes, it is a big major surgery, but, you know, with all that help and everything, we've, we've turned it, we've turned it into a good thing. Yeah, I can, I can bet because there are some injuries in baseball that you just never want to hear, like ACLs, PCLs, and Tommy John's probably the biggest one. So I can't even imagine how hard it was to go through that and to take that much time off. But after that, you were eligible for the Rule 5 draft. And what was your reaction when you saw that the Red Sox had taken you, I believe it was fourth in the draft? Yeah, I mean, it was just pure excitement. I mean, it was it was something that I knew was a possibility might happen. You know, I might get Rule 5, I might not. And so it was one of those things that I was talking to my wife when it happened, and it was just funny because, you know, my first four years of pro ball, obviously I'm with the Yankees, and, you know, they preach like the Yankee way, Yankee way. And so like everything's drilled into your head, Yankees, Yankees, Yankees. And then all of a sudden they drop a hat. Hey, you're a Boston Red Sox. And it's like, whoa, all right, here we go now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going off that, how how weird has it been for you to think, well, I was a part of the New York Yankees organization. Now I need to completely switch sides of the rivalry in the greatest rivalry in baseball and switch to becoming a Red Sox. How how does that feel like? Well, I mean, like you said it best is I get to go from one amazing organization to the next. I mean, it's probably the two best organizations in all of baseball and probably two of the best franchises in all of sports. And so, like, I can't say anything, but, like, I'm extremely blessed to have played for both those, like, organizations. And so, you know, I'm really thankful for what the Yankees have done, and now I'm really excited to see what we can get going with the Red Sox. All right. So how did you get that? Um, were you watching me? Rule 5 draft, or did you get a call from anybody in the Yankees that they had been, or from the Red Sox that you'd been selected? So I was actually working out at the at the time. My strength coach said, hey, let's turn it on to see. And, um, you know, we were listening to it. And obviously it's not like the normal draft because like the, or like your first, first time you get drafted because they call you before they draft you and they say, hey, we're going to take you. And this one, it was like just listening to names. And then, holy crap, I heard my name. It kind of like, I had to do a double take like, wait, that was actually me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how was um, I know it's only been a week since the Rule 5 draft has happened, but have you gotten in contact with any of the guys on the team? Have any of them reached out to you yet? Uh, none of the players, but all the coaching staff and front office have reached out to me and 
they've been extremely helpful um saying you know if i if i have any questions or need anything just to reach out and you know they're uh they're just like hey let's let's see where you're at let's get ready for spring training and you know just come ready to compete all right so um is there anybody on the team that you're especially looking forward to working with either on the pitching staff or somebody that's a fielder i mean any of the veterans you know i i'm ready to get down there and i I just want to be a fly on the wall. You know, I, I want to listen to what these veterans have got to say. I want to listen to what, what got these guys there, what they're doing right and everything, because that's the thing is they're veterans. They've been there for a long time and you know what they do works. And so, you know, I'm just blessed to have the opportunity to like go in and, you know, just see how they do things and listen to how they do things and, you know, try and implement that into the way I do things. Yeah. And trust me, us Red Sox fans are so excited to have you on to this kind of youth movement we have in the bullpen between you coming in, uh, Tanner Houck, Nick Pavetta, these guys coming up. We're so excited to have a like complete revamp of the bull- of the bullpen from uh, last year. But us and our fans want to know more the personal side of you too. When people think of you, they mainly think, oh, he's a baseball player. But I know that takes up a lot of your time, but do you have any other hobbies outside of baseball? <laughs> I'm just a good old country boy, so mm-hmm. I grew up on the farm, and so, you know, I, I enjoy the, the farming aspect of things, but, you know, if I get some time off, I enjoy, you know, wetting a line and see if I can catch some fish, or, you know, I, I love hiking. I mean, that's what me and my wife do all the time, is if, if we're not working out or she's not working, we're we're probably in the woods somewhere just hiking around, and, you know, we do that with our dog all the time, and so, you know, I, I'd say probably that is just, any you get me outdoors, and I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Coming from a Tennessee boy, I can I feel that extremely because back 40 out here is just nothing but woods, and it's beautiful just to go walking through there and just enjoy it, and especially fishing. Man, I love fishing so much. Oh, yeah. So which which do you prefer, though? Do you prefer being up there in the Boston, New York cold area, or do you prefer being down here in the Georgia Southern? Well, shoot, when it comes to heat and cold and everything, I definitely would prefer to be warm and all that, but um that's that's where the baseball is so you know i, I gotta say you know i shoot put me in boston because now it's baseball season because mm-hmm. i know a bunch of my friends up there i go to college about 45 minutes or so outside of um boston i know a lot of my friends up there were saying oh we got this terrible nor'easter up here it's so bad and i'm sitting down here i walk outside nothing but shorts and t-shirt <laughs> Yeah, see, that's the crazy thing is everybody up north comes down south and we're all bundled up in coats and everything like that. And all the northerners are like, wait a minute, it ain't even cold out here. And we're sitting over here shivering. (laughs) Exactly. So every baseball player, whether you're just a high school kid wanting to go to the next level or you're in the minor league system, has that dream of playing for the first time in the MVP or in the major leagues. Do you expect anything out of that that first time you hit the mound? either in spring training or regular season, doesn't matter. But, but do you have any expectations for yourself or do you just dream of anything happening that first time you hit the mound? Shoot, I'm going to soak it up. You know, that that's the thing that I promised myself after that TJ um, surgery is, you know, it, tomorrow's never promised to anyone. You know, you never know when your last day of baseball is going to be. And so I promised myself, you know, when I got back, whether I'm playing in the GCL or like you said, I'm in the big leagues, I'm going to, I'm going to not take anything for granted. I'm going to soak up every single second of it, especially like if I'm in Fenway and seeing the history and everything like that. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to enjoy every minute of it because it's it, tomorrow is not promised to anyone and you never know when your last day is going to be. And so that, that's just what I'm looking forward to most is, is getting back and just soaking it up. Mm-hmm. I absolutely feel that. But have you ever been to Fenway before? Have you ever seen the ballpark in person? Yeah, so I went. I I played in the Cape Cod League after my freshman oh, yeah. uh, year of college, and so uh, my my host family uh, took me to Fenway for a game, and um, I, I feel embarrassed that I don't remember who the Red Sox were playing anything because I was just in awe of the history and you know what is Fenway and everything. So I I think I was more looking around and reading plaques and like all that kind of stuff more than I was actually watching the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I I was the same way too the first time I went. I've been a huge bet, uh, Red Sox fan my entire life. Finally got to go to a game in tw- early 2019. 
it's like April or something. And, and I don't even remember like anything about it. I was just so fascinated by the ballpark, the history behind everything. Well, it was actually because the, the Red Sox were getting their butts whipped that day, but <laughs> we're not, we're not going to talk about that. There you go. But I got, I got two more questions for you. The first one being, like I said, you came up from being a very little known prospect to going to college to being a very late drafted guy or a middle round drafted guy. How was that? How much training did you have to put in to still beat the odds and make it to where you are today? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got you got to work hard every day because, I mean, there's, there's an old saying that says every time you're taking, you know, a day off, someone else is working out and getting better that day. And so, you know, I. You know, like I said, I grew up on a farm, and so I've got that blue collar mentality that, you know, I just got to work my tail off, and that's how I'm going to be. You know, that's how I'm going to be good. Is you know, like I got to outwork people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I know this has been something very short, but I do really want to thank you for coming in, taking your time out of your day, because I'm I'm sure a bunch of people are hitting your lineup, trying to get interviews and stuff with you. So means a lot to me that you decided to come on here and talk to me and our fans. But final question I have for you is say there's that kid in your shoe that was in the same spot that you were, you know, either a kid trying to make it to D one. That's not really scouted or a low level college kid who's trying to make it to the minors. What advice to them? What advice do you have to them knowing that you've been through that road and all that? I mean, I would, I would definitely say, you know, work your tail off, listen to what your coaches have to say, but more importantly, find that mentor and find that person that you trust in and that's been in those situations and just listen to everything he's got to say and, you know, try and learn what he's telling you and, but, you know, just work your tail off. And, and like I said, like, even if you're in high school and you're playing freshman ball, you know, those four years go faster. If you're a senior on your last year of varsity, you know, Soak in every one of those, every one of the games, you know, don't, don't wish away any time, anything like that, because, you know, baseball is such a, it's such a gift and, you know, I, I've been blessed to play it for as long as I have, but, you know, like, you know, even if you're six, seven, eight years old, you know, it, it's a, it's a gift. And so just enjoy every second of, you know, whatever level you're playing at. All right. And I could literally just sit here and pick apart your brain for hours because I love the game so much and it has always been a dream of mine to sit here and talk to a major league player especially for the team that I've been rooting for for so long so once again huge shout out to you huge thank you for coming on we would love to have you back on sometime around end of the season once you're not busy with all that just to see how your first season as a member of the Boston Red Sox went but is there anything else you want to say to either me or the people before we head off no, I, I really appreciate you having me on. You know, you make it seem like it's it's such an awesome thing to have me on, but I, I appreciate you guys like uh, having me on, and you know, it's a, it's an honor to be able to you know be in the platform that I have and everything. And so, you know, I'm I'm excited to be a Red Sox and can't wait to see what this season holds. Man, I can't wait either. Hopefully, we'll be able to have some fans in the stands because this is my last year at college, and being 45 minutes away, I want to go and watch a couple more baseball games. So with that being said, once again, thank you so much for coming on to the fans. We'll see you guys next time.
torch, but a light from a forest sky. Fly to the forces above us, light. Keep holding on to this present time. Inspired by the ones that were left behind us. We fell for the light of a foreign sky. Flying to the forces above this light.